Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Isabel and Bruno from Apprentice One to One. So today we're going to have a look at some design software from Electrical OM. I'm going to take you on a full run through building up a solar system install. Let's get straight to it and see how it all works. So I thought I'd demonstrate a build up of another solar PV installation using Modexoft Electrical OM. You can see I'm putting a main supply into place and choosing a value of ZE that makes sense to the installation related to this. I'm also setting the earthing sizes within the main software and you can see here you can add in a value for your earth rod which is particularly useful if you are setting up as a prosumer. You can see with a low voltage protection device we are also able to determine our cable sizes, what the fuse rating is and if we want to show it on the schematics which in this case I'm going to. We can then set the type of premises if we wish to, there's all kinds of different options within there and also if it is a prosumer installation you can enable that within the software. So for us as examples installing the Give Energy AIOs that is a particularly useful feature. You see now we've got our main supply all set up, we've got our fuses and tails in place and the electricity meter sat there as well. So we can install our distribution board now and I'm going to keep this relatively simple. So we've got a four way three phase board on there and you can see as a default based on the settings that I've got in place within OM there are some predetermined values of cable sizes, conductors and over current protective devices so I'm just running through and changing these to those applicable to the installation so we've got our main feed to the DB as those single inch uh, sorry double insulated tails and we've got our protective device and isolator removed because they're not in place this is just fed straight off the meter through into the distribution board we can now add in our three-phase solar PV inverter and you can see again it pre-populates with those defined values and I'm just going to start changing those and setting some um, numbers against what this inverter is supposed to do. So again we're going for uh, a multi-core XLP armoured cable run to 70 degrees most importantly we're popping it in a 63mm duct in the ground. It's a long old run, we're going to go for 150 metres and we've got those 35 mil conductors we've put on there to start with. I'm taking away the RCDs and isolators and adjusting the overcurrent protective device, which we we'll have to use 15 kA rated variants because of the maximum short circuit current on this supply. You can see we've got that there now and we've still got some issues highlighted which we're going to work through but I'm just choosing um, a CPC on that circuit of the armors and a separate cable. So we need to adjust our peak PV power within the inverter to match what is actually connected. OM's guiding us towards that and we've cleared the issues with our circuits for the time being. You can see we have got volt drop within circuit 1 currently showing as 9.31 and that is to do with the um, settings that we've currently got in play as regards our system. So we're popping strings in here. I'm trying to balance the uh, strings out against our inverter rating across the three phases. So I'm going to run with 19 that roughly balances out to 25 kilowatts of generation based on those panels. And I'm going to change our cabling type for the strings to 6 mil, set an approximate length, and we can set these. I was thinking of using this option because they sit inside some of the rails um, on an installation but I've gone for the tray option in the end because they are set against that as well. Now this is something that will vary based on your installation method and there are absolutely loads of options within OM and it relates to all of the cabling types for both AC and DC. It's not particular to, to one or the other. And you can see there, again, if you look across the bottom, it gives you some of the correction factors and values that are loaded against that cable. Um, so if you need to make any changes, you can do. They're all in the drop down. Put it on a perforated tray. You can see those figures start to move around and how that might have an effect. You see, again, looking at the volt drop figure now, if you see over on the left-hand side before we exited that screen, um, it did adjust. But I'm just pasting similar in now. So we've got our three um, strings generating into our three phase inverter. And you can see the volt drop within those circuits has moved. We have got a maximum voltage rating on the inverter set to 1000 volts. So I'm going to bump that up to 1500 to cover us off there. And you can see here it's making a suggestion as to your input DC as related to the AC rating of your inverter. Now we can adjust how that 
appears by changing the number of panels within our strings, or you could change um, the watts output per panel. I've taken this approach just to quickly illustrate to you how that DC-AC ratio moves to an acceptable value in terms of what OM is telling us, and um, place the fault away as regards that, or the, the warning, if you like. So I'm now going to insert an SPD. So we're just popping in our AC SPD here, and again, it pops up with some predefined values. They're all fully adjustable. You can make changes as you need to. If you've got an overcurrent protective device on it, you can pop that in there. All of your conductor sizes you can see over on the left-hand side. If it's type 1, type 2, type 3, the connection type, its actual ratings, it is all user-definable within OM. And there's some great guides on there as well. If you do get a bit stuck or don't understand exactly what these mean, it takes you off to those resources where you can get some more information. Obviously, it's got a bit cluttered on the old display here, so I'm going to have a little look at trying to shuffle some of those around. If you go to the schematic functions, you can move your labels. And again, spin them around in the opposite direction if you think it, um, if it looks better. And if you've got a bigger install building up, I'd spend more time on the look and layout of it. But this is quite a simple one to just quickly put forward on this video. So we're able to make those changes super simple. And again, now we can pop our DC SPDs in here. Again, that's done that across the um, three-phase PV inverter. And again, you can make changes to all of that as before and set it up as needed within the um, circuit edit functions of Electrical OM. Um, and again, it's all there to drop down through the lists and basically choose what you need. And we've got all of that covered off now. We're not going to use an overcurrent protective device on this one. We'll save our changes and jump back. And thankfully, we've got no warnings currently showing. So you can see the main layout of everything there. We're just going to move this label as we did with the other SPD one because there's quite a lot of text there just to fill the space more nicely. So we've got our whole circuit feed top to bottom from that meter down to the strings. Now you can run reports with all of this which are super handy for both proposals and handover packs and just having a check through of yourself. These can be as detailed as you want. I've ticked every option on here and the uh, the information that comes out is off the scale. Incredible. It is it's uh, you know it's unreal what this um, software can actually produce in terms of usable data for us to present to clients. But one of the most important aspects with your solar PV stuff, and I covered this on the podcast with the guys on the Apprentice One to One channel, is around your volt drop in both directions, because that's something that can be overlooked with voltage rise and voltage drop. And OM has got that baked in as well. We'll have a look at that in a minute, but we're just scrolling down here to try and find where the volt drop section is in the reports. So you've got all your circuit charts, what's going on with your cable in, maximum ZSs and everything. But you can see there the volt drop at 400 slash 230 volts on the solar PV inverter is 1.34%, and I've set the max limit to 2. Now, industry guidance, we've got that 1% in, but there is a caveat to that, as we covered in the podcast, when you are on massive um, arrays where that's not as realistic as we might want it to be, that there are some allowances and tolerances within that to work beyond the 1%. So I've allowed a bit of that within this particular design, but we'll go back and look at that in a minute. You can see all of your selectivity and circuit charts, line diagrams, all of that good stuff in there as well. Now if we're looking at the strings again and the um, inverter, you can see if I upsize the conductor within the um, inverter supply cable, the volt drop calculation within the, within the inverter will adjust accordingly. Now with the strings, it's looking at the, the DC side of stuff. So again, if we move that up to a 95, and you change the size of the duct, obviously, because you're not going to fit a 95 mil 5 core down that little duct. And those values are not really shuffling around in a great way at present. But if we change the size of those string cable conductors, which we can have a look at doing in just a second, then you'll see that start to shuffle around. So you see we've got our uh, 1.32 volts there within that one. And if we just drop that up to a 10 mil size, you can see the volt drop as I save the changes moves so we can do that and we can change the volt drop limit with on the ac side um, of the inverter as well and again swapping the conductor sizes with that will adjust things so it's um just a, an indication of what's going on as you change your cable size because volt drops the enemy when you've got long cable runs along with your air fault loop impedance values and you can see there we've got 1.34 percent of volt drop on the pv inverter with those 35 mil conductors if we change that to 50 as an example and apply those changes we drop under the one percent um, which is 
a good thing good thing to see when you you're on the on the fence between a cable size and you kind of shall I go with 35 shall I go with 50 and you've done all your calculations yourself by hand to do that with some software and see as a as a second guess if you like of your own calculations or to make the calculations easier to begin with by just using this it is a fantastic resource and very much something that helps with learning as well i found om a great way to improve my design skills not just um, verifying them it's helped me upskill and develop my design abilities which has been super useful and you can see there again back at the main screen where the schematic is laying everything out in a visual way and all of these titles and descriptions are all adjustable and it pulls through into certificate format as well so obviously you can enter all your project details at the start i've not done any of that i've left this as the apprentice one-to-one -one template but it pre-populates all your circuit charts and your overcome protective devices and it will cross-reference what your test values are against the design as well. So you can see at installation stage if there's been a, maybe an error with the install or the testing's maybe not come out quite in the way we expect that the design to say it should and figure out why that variation might be in place. Electrical OM has a free 14-day trial. I'll drop a link in alongside the description of this video. So if you want to go off and try it yourselves, you can do. You can import all your results from the mobile app. So there is a, a mobile version of this, which is the best place to enter your test results, to be honest. And you can allocate those to your particular engineers, pull that data back into the main software. There is also the CAD plan feature where you can draw across existing diagrams or make your own. And obviously things like selectivity comparison charts are super useful for if you're trying to cover those bases off as well. It's been an absolute game changer for us, super helpful with the solar PV stuff, and it gets a big thumbs up and recommendation from me. So I hope you enjoyed a quick run through Electrical OM. I've been using this for two or three years now, and I've got to thank Neil Bridgman and Stuart Cato for pointing me at it. I don't think with what we do and the stuff I have going on outside the day job, I could get by without using it. It is that important to us now and it enables me to do bigger designs than we've ever taken on before, certainly much more quickly and gives you that second opinion to check yourself as well. Because we all run through these designs and when it is pen and paper, the only real reference point you've got is you. With the software, you can go on that journey with it and I'm far from an expert. There are loads of awesome videos on the Modex Soft YouTube channel and from Spencer Henry as well with webinars. They do specific training for anyone who wants to learn more about it and to be able to use it better. That is something that I definitely need to look at in the future. But yeah, this is a massive recommendation for me. They do support us at Apprentice One to One for total clarity on all of that. But in the day job, this is something we use as standard. And Isabel has been wanting to introduce one of these videos for a long time. She tells a lot of her friends that her dad does YouTube. YouTube. She has no idea, really, of the, the very small channel that I have here. But as a parent who have those concerns about kids on the internet and such, I have decided that it's fine and we need to relax a little bit. And it's great that she is excited in stuff that I do. So that's the reason for her at the start. I think she did a great job. If you are her friends watching this video... Please give Isabel a big round of applause when you next see her. And otherwise, thank you for watching this. If you've got any comments or questions, please do drop them in below and I will see you on the next one.